Hello one, and welcome back to John Builds Iconic Military Models. Okay, so as you can see, I've kind of got all my tools laid out on my cutting mat. And I've been asking over the uh, course this last two years, I've had a lot of people say to me, oh John, when are you going to make a video about obviously the essential tools that you use? And it's kind of one of those videos that I kind of just never normally have time to get around to. But because I've kind of got a little bit more free time on my hands now, I thought obviously the uh, the time was now. So like I said, so it's pretty much, why did I call it a poor man's guide? Because obviously if you can look on my uh, obviously tool bench now, you can see there's actually a default, this is like the full collection of everything that I kind of use. And there's only actually probably around about 30 pounds worth of actual tools that's laid out on this table, maybe a little bit more. So that's why I kind of called it the uh, poor man's guide, because people think that model ship building is a really expensive hobby. And it can be, and I know some people have got these amazing workshops with thousands of pounds worth of tools. But when you're just starting out, you can kind of get away with only really having to spend around about 20, 30 pound. And then obviously just as you get better and if you really enjoy this hobby, then you can kind of start to upgrade. And like I said, there's lots of things I'd like to upgrade to. I've got a wish list as long as my arm. But I could, I know that if I wanted to, I could pretty much build an entire ship out of everything that's sat on this table. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to start to go through some of the tools on the table and kind of obviously where I use them for and obviously uh, what, what the benefits. Okay, so one of the first things that you're actually going to use is a paintbrush because pretty much it's the first part of the entire construction obviously of a model ship. It always tends to be working on these ribs and these the keel sections. So I'm across this little, uh, this was obviously a start pipe that I started using when I uh, started my HS victory. And like I said, the first thing you can't ever do is, as more people know, is you obviously start to assemble all the other rib, rib sections. So, for me, the first thing I use for one or two months is just a paintbrush and some glue. So I say, so come in any cheap paintbrush, I've got different sizes, and what I tend to do is obviously my partner, she does, does a lot of painting, so when I obviously her paintbrushes tend to get a little bit worn, I just ask her to give them to me, and I use them for my gluing. Like I say, I know some people can kind of like, uh, you can add your glue directly to the joints, but I like to just put a little bit Inside a little, inside a little paper cup, and then obviously just using my paintbrush, just taking the glue out of that, and obviously brushing the seams. So I'd say for the first couple of months, one of the most important things you're going to use is a sheet paintbrush. Okay, so what what else you're going to use first off? Well, normally I say, like I say, when you first start in, the first thing you're going to use as well is like a craft knife, and I have two craft knives. I use a really precision craft knife that has a really fine tip, and obviously yeah. These are obviously used for the really fine work. And then I use these retractable craft knives that I can kind of, you, after you've kind of like taken away the edge and taken away the sharp edge, you break off this tip and then you can kind of get a new sharp edge as well. And I use that for like more rough cutting. Well, I say this one is mainly for when you're kind of first starting and you're cutting out, I'll just bring this across. This is one of the, uh, the launches that I need to work on. But it's the only kind of thing that I've got left. It's on the, on the, uh, the need cutting out, so I'll just show you this. Yeah, so like I say, when you first kind of start, you, you're going to get like, obviously, your, your keeled timbers, and they tend to come in parts A. So this is one of these really precision craft knives that are really useful. And it's just for just cutting these, just obviously out of the, uh, out of the little parts. And it's because I say there's normally just where it's been laser cut, they normally leave a little bit of timber left over, and then you can use your really sharp precision craft knife just to cut these out. Okay, so I'll keep that safe because this is what I'm going to build next. Actually, I've got four launches to build for my HS Victory, and I've not built one yet, so I think I'm going to work on the launch. Yeah, okay, so when you're kind of starting out, like I say normally the first thing you're doing is obviously you're gluing all your or your, obviously your ribs into your keel timbers. So what you tend to have them do is, you tend to have to be gluing things, two parts together quite a lot. So like I say, one of the, obviously, probably the first essential parts to do as well, is get yourself a really good set of nice, these little jaw clamps. And these are quite good for when you, when you obviously you're gluing your two parts together when you first start. And like I said, just enough, you can get like a couple of sizes. I've got these really large ones. I've also got some of these really small ones as well. Like I said, it'd be ideal if I had kind of like a little kit that I could kind of show you. One of the biggest disappointments is also when I started filming my HS Victory, as I didn't film, film all the, uh, the glue and the keel together. 
So I say so at some point, I'll probably have to go back and get yourself a little beginner's kit so I can kind of show you that. But this is like, say, with these little jaw clamps, these are one of the essential parts as well. Okay, so you've kind of you've used your paintbrush, you've kind of used your also little scalpel, and you've also used your little jaw clamps, and you kind of progressed onto obviously adding all your, all your frame into your keel. So now you're gonna pretty much gonna start onto your planking section. So like I say, for me, I've got like two uh, tools that I use for planking quite a bit. And that's, so let's say I use this, what's this plank cutter. This is what I kind of, when I first started, I use this as well. Like I say, this is only around about 10 pound, and I know there's some really, really, really expensive ones out there, but this one just kind of just does the job. It's not precision. It's not as obviously great as I would like, but it does the job. So like I say, after using these for quite a while, I actually decided just to get myself a razor saw. And I started to cut my, my planks for a razor saw because one of the differences is well, obviously with these plank cutters is the way it cuts it, it can kind of leave a little bit of a V cut on the end of the, uh, the plank. So I'll just show you that. Okay, so it's got a piece of paper. So I've got some of the way the, way the planks are. This plank cut, when it cuts it, it can actually slightly leave a like a, I mean, obviously I've exaggerated that, but as it cuts it, it can leave a slight tapered on so once you when you do the same on the other side you can kind of end up having a joint and it kind of looks like that so obviously that's not ideal really when you have joined you want obviously quite a nice flat joint so obviously when they butt up all nice and flat you can each other so then you just got the, the glue joint there and like I say that's just because on the end of this, it does have a like a blade that cuts a slight taper. So that's why I tend to not, to not to use that. So for actually cutting my planks now to length, is I use a little mite block, it's my same again, and I use a little razor saw. So this actually this is a little bit of leftover scrap of planking. So that's kind of what I do, is this put into the, the jaws. These are not precision, these are just uh, like I say, around about ten pound off of Amazon. You have a little bit, a little bit of slot there. Like I say, no, there's a lot better one. But like I say, this is a, this is just a poor man guide. So what I tend to do is also when I'm cutting my planks, is I'll just kind of push it all the way to one side or all the way to the other side, and then that gives you a nice straight cut. And that's normally just how I cut my planks. So when you start planking your planks across the ribs, you're pretty much going to have like your three ribs going up, and then you kind of span that with your plank. So normally on each rib, you have to normally have to either use a little pin, or you can glue it and clamp it. What I tend to do is obviously when I did mine, is I just use these these tiny little pins, and I used a pin pusher. This is a slightly larger one actually that you need. This is like a two mil diameter. And really, you probably could just do with just a one mil one, but it still serves a purpose. But it's just not as uh, it tends to the pin is tends to just rackle around a bit in the end, which is not the greatest. So I say, so I preload the pin. What you can kind of do is sometimes you tend to drop out. So what I actually like to do myself is just kind of put the pin in position first, get your pin pusher, and then use pin pinch him down. Another option is I actually, I prefer myself, you just get myself a little, this is a four ounce ball pin hammer. And I like that because I can kind of use it on both ends. And when I did all, pretty much all my entire, your mat build. In fact, if you want to kind of see a little bit more planking, I have just got a full, a full planking guide on the uh, battleship your It's not quite, it's not exactly the same as the ship of the line planking, but it's very similar, very similar technique. So I might say you can kind of watch that. Yeah, but like I say, 90% of my planking, I tend to just like, put the pin in, kind of in the right position first, and then just use my little hammer and tack them in. Okay, so the pens that I tend to use, is also I tend to use normally three. I've got like a, a normal, just a normal standard pencil that I kind of use. I tend to use a little propelling pencil for a really fine line. And then sometimes if I'm using like a darker wood, I'll just tend to just use a Sharpie. So I'm pretty much, like I say, so I've got an M3 pens and I also just tend to use two rulers as well. I've got just a standard small little six inch ruler and I've got a large 12 inch ruler. 
and it's actually uh, it's got the cork back in, so it kind of makes it non-slip. So I'll kind of show you the kind of differences. That one can kind of you can even though you're trying to hold it down, sometimes it can slide. Put the cork back in when you kind of put it in place, and you're going to draw your line. It tends to be it won't move. So now, like I say, so that's when you get your different kind of pencil lines. So if I want a slightly larger pencil line, I use the ballpoint pen, ball pencil. So then say if I want a, just a finer line, I use a Capellian pencil. And then if I want like a, say I'm using it on a little bit of walnut or something that's like slightly hard one and I can't really see it, and then I'll just come in and use a Sharpie. And actually the Sharpie out of all of them is the one that tends to give you the slightest, uh, the smallest line. So that's also the, the kind of pens that I, I use and the rulers. So one of the tools I like to use as well is just a micrometer. And I use these quite often. And one of the, the main things I tend to use it for is also when it says to instructions, obviously use it like a, a five mil by a 2.5. I'm kind of, you know, because obviously as we get them in the kit, they kind of thrown, uh, all, like, kind of thrown in. So it's kind of like, sometimes you get them all individually bagged and that's quite good, but the way I get it, and I've got loads and loads of scrap wood just left all over. So when I'm trying to look for a piece of wood that I need, these are ideal. So you can kind of just put them on and you realize that's 2.5 by, it's never quite five mil, but they're not far off. And it's also, there's loads of other things you can use these for, but I tend to just use them mainly for sort of measuring wood. Okay, so for drilling the holes, I've got this Archimedes drill and I started to use it when I, when I first started, but I don't kind of like it that much. So you kind of put that on and you kind of press it down and it drills. Just like that. But also when you're drilling, you tend to be drilling most of the time on the side from like a, a model ship build. And I don't kind of, I mean, it's ideal for drilling flat onto the cutting mark, but when you're actually drilling onto the side of something like that, I don't think it's quite as, quite as good. So I don't tend to use that. So all I tend to use is just a little pin vise one and you can just load it with different different uh, size heads. I think it goes up to about three mil this and I just tend to use it. I just, I just kind of like it and kind of put it outside so you can see. I just prefer this one. I just, a lot, it just feels like a lot more control. And like I say, you've probably seen me use a few other ones. Obviously I've recently bought myself like a, a little USB power drill and I use that quite a lot now but I wanted to kind of show you what I, I use for kind of like the first two years when I was building Hatchers Victory and that's all these prints were was just these two drills these two little drills. Okay so I've got this sanding block and pretty much I mean when I first started I pretty much planked the entire HS Victory and I pretty much just sanded it using this uh, this sanding block and I kind of use that if you've got like a lot to a lot to cut away but to be honest with you, 90% of the time, I actually just like to just fold a little bit of sandpaper up in my hand and just do it that way. Because I just, I just think it's so much easier to actually feel, feel the kind of the, the, obviously the curvature of the, obviously the ship through your hand. So that's all I tend to do. Yeah. So all I tend to do is just kind of get some sandpaper, fold it up into a nice manageable side, and then just I don't know where lots more that, but I don't want to cut it. And then you just kind of work it with your hand. I mean, you just get some more control just with sandpaper in your hand. But when you want to take off a lot of material, especially when you've just re firstly planked your, your ship, then just use one of these block ones so you can kind of really get hold of it and you can kind of take off a lot of material. So that's the sandpaper. I've pretty much only got a couple of kind of tools left that I kind of use just for it. Like I say, there's so many more tools to use, but this is the essential starters one that pretty much you can pretty much get your entire ship fully obviously fully planked and then obviously all the decking put down as well so pretty much by using these these tools i've shown you so a little bit further on you tend to get a little bit more brass kind of brass parts so you need yourself a good a good pair of side cutters these have gone a little bit blunt now i've had these for, for two years and ready for, for, for a new set yeah so i'm getting ready for a, a kind of new set but at the minute they still serve the purpose like saying most people know from my channel i have to kind of run this channel on a bit of a shoestring and I really only can kind of buy new tools when I really essentially need them. But these sort of the parts, just for when you kind of start working on all the brass sections in the build. And then what you need is also, you need yourself a nice little, uh, this is actually a Windsor and Newton, and this is just a little filler, filler knife. So after you've filled all the hole, you need to start adding some uh, filler, 
this is what you need it's a nice little filler knife and i use that quite a lot as well you're gonna get yourself a, a really good set of files they uh, obviously come in essential when you start like say when you start working on the brass parts a little bit further on so you need yourself to get yourself a really good set of files but same again i just kind of bought a little set they cost around about five pound and that served me ever all the way through the build and then lastly there's kind of these essential tools is you just need yourself a really good set of tweezers and i use just some straight ones that i kind of use just for like pulling obviously if you have some rigging you can kind of just grab it and you can kind of pull it through then if you need to slightly need to work one when you're having to work around some corners and i've got these slightly bent end ones and these are kind of good just for kind of getting in getting the other piece of wire or string and then just pulling it okay so pretty much my entire collection of uh, of tools like i say i've got some obviously i'd like people see now I've, I've bought a few little extra bits i use that mini uh circular saw now but like i say that's only got this year and i've been building victory for the last two years is pretty much using exactly everything that i've showed you on this table so like i said i mean I hope people found this uh this video quite useful like i say i mean victory is it's, it's that big now it's become quite difficult to uh to film like i used to so maybe that i should i should do and I'd, what i would like to do for people as well i'd like to do uh, like a big a beginner's uh, beginner's build because there's no way in the world in hs victory is a beginner's kit so I'd like to do something a little bit smaller, maybe just like a one a one mast shape. I've actually been looking at the uh, the Lady Nelson. I think that was a really good kit. It's only around about this size, so it'd be kind of kind of good to kind of build that as a beginner's kit, so I could show people that way. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Like I said, I've just opened up another channel as well. Obviously, there'll be a link in the description where it's pretty much going to be a little bit more live builds. If you like the live builds and live chatting and obviously building live, you can go and subscribe to that. And also, I just want to thank all my patrons. Like I say, at the minute, where the way the world is with the global pandemic, they're pretty much the only way I can kind of keep this uh, channel going now is through the support and the donations from my patrons. So like I say, so if anybody would like to uh, so obviously support the work, there's a link in the description for Patreon as well. So anyway, take care, buddy, and I'll see you all again soon.